Welcome everybody, Double Tap here, and today I bring you guys something that I'm really excited about, a brand new series for the game, Medieval Dynasty. This game has everything that I love in these types of survival games. It's kind of like a banished, except instead of an overtop godlike view, we actually get to participate in the world as one sole person who builds up our own dynasty from start to finish. So this is going to be really, really exciting. I hope you guys enjoy this series. If you guys do, don't forget to double tap on that like and that subscribe button it really helps build this channel up and keeps me notified that you guys want more and more content like this so without any further ado let's jump right into this i used to have a simple life Whatever needed doing round the farm, I'd do it. <laughs> Being the eldest son, it's tough. But at least we had a living, and our plates were never empty. Then, the war came. I lost everything overnight. The last thing I remember is father pushing me away, yelling for me to run. To live. At first, I didn't know what to do. Then, I remembered. A story my mother once told me. A story about my uncle, Jordan. He made a modest fortune up north, in a peaceful valley far away from the war. For weeks, I held on to that thought, until the valley from my mother's stories could see it. This is where I can start a new life. So here we are in this beautiful world that we are going to be living and surviving in. So first things first, I am going to open up our map right away by pressing M and you'll notice you'll have quite a bit of information up here, our time, what month it is, or sorry, what season it is, should I say, the temperature, so on and so forth, all the basic things that you would expect from a map. And if you zoom in here, you'll see all these little towns, if you will. And there will be little question marks and exclamation marks within these towns. And those are going to be the different quests that the people are trying to give us in those said towns. Here we have our management tab where once we start recruiting people, we can manage what they do and see their overall statuses. That will be for future reference. Here's our technology tab. This is really important. This is where we'll be getting a lot of our upgrades from. You'll see the very first upgrade here is going to be the shovel and then simple stick fence. They also have multiple tabs here that if you go through for hunting, for instance, we'll be able to unlock the bow bird traps etc etc there's multiple tabs here that we will be growing and expanding on as we go through the game here's our journal which is where our quests are going to be very very typical for these style games and here is our skills trees same thing as before quite typical there's a lot of uh, skills that we can upgrade here we have all kinds of different tabs here as you can see all very important to the game for different things here we have our inventory which is where it was going to show us everything that we have on our body and this game does implement weight things as well so there's a weight value to everything as you can see and if you have your weight go beyond the overall weight that your man can hold you will slow down considerably so it is something worth taking note of because as you go through this game you're not going to be able to just grab whatever you want you are going to have to plot things out and think things through a little bit but yeah without any further ado let's get right into it so our first objective there you can see up on our compass right above us that there's an exclamation mark it says it's 290 meters away so we are going to make way to our first objective but on the way we are going to collect some sticks and stone that i see along the way because i know we will need that for our very first production here so matter of fact if you hold q you'll go over to crafting 
and you'll be able to see that our stone axe is going to require 10 sticks and two rocks so most of these beginning things just use very very simple objects like sticks logs and rocks so on our way to our first objective we are going to try to collect some of those things birch branches collect some sticks here you'll see on the left side it shows us the actual stick value that we're getting so sometimes we'll get three sometimes we'll get two depending on the said stick rocks are a little bit harder to find in this game but they are on the ground as well if you just keep your eyes open there you go here's a little pile of rocks here that's definitely going to become handy we will need those there's another rock here just pick up a few items on the way here and look at this look at these graphics it's beautiful and we're going to be able to create our own little town in here too wherever we choose so it's really exciting I love these kinds of open-ended games where you make your own path. I am a fan of linear games as well where they have a story that you have to go down in a set path. But it is really nice to make your own story. I love games like that. Typical controls for these. WASD, shift for sprinting, space to jump. So very, very typical. Look at all these plots of land here for farming. People already have some nice farming set up going over here. Beautiful. Got some wheat growing. I suppose that's the merchant right there. Oh yeah, here's a merchant there, beautiful. So you'll see along our own things here that there's also a price, which I'm assuming, yeah, you could sell. So here's the sell price and here is the purchase price for what he offers. This is really worth taking note of. He offers some egg, meat, animal feed, and fertilizer. So if we get our own farm going, it seems like he'll be somebody who might end up being quite important. But that's good to know that he's got that. Matter of fact, I think you can go right up to the cows that he has here too. Yeah, you can and purchase them. There's a calf there. You could buy a cow for 5000 a calf for 4500 So it's definitely worth keeping note of as we expand our own little plot of land. Ooh, looks like the sun is getting a little talking to over here. <laughs> I'll let them uh, do their own thing. I'll mind my own business for now. But this is the first little town that you run into. And uh, we're going to go ahead and talk to our objective over here. Unigost, I guess is his name. I'm going to absolutely butcher these names. Forgive me now, but we're going to call him Unigost for now. Hey, stranger. What brings you to our valley? You don't look like a merchant or a pilgrim. No, I am not. Rasimir is my name, and I came from the south looking for my uncle Lorden. I guess we'll go with that. In his old home, they called him Lorden the Raftsman. Lorden. Ah, yes, he told me once about his life on the river. You came to the right place, but a few years too late, I'm afraid. Why? What has happened to my uncle? He was a great man and even better friend, Rasimir, as a good craftsman and an excellent trader. He made a small fortune here. See the tavern over there? He built it and ran it, as well as many other shops you will find in the valley. My mother told me he got wealthy in the north. I had no idea how wealthy, but that doesn't answer my question. Your uncle got himself killed, my friend. He had this idea, idea of a huge trade with the German kingdom in the west. Five carts filled with the best iron ore, beautiful colored linen, and our excellent beer, pulled by ten oxen. He was not fooling around, I could tell you that much. So what happened? How did he die? His trek got ambushed by bandits. His carters slaughtered. He must have put up a good fight. Took two with him to the death from what we saw when we searched for him. I buried him myself, or better, what the wolves left behind. I'm sorry, sorry to be the bearer of such bad news. My uncle is dead. His wealth is gone. I came all this way here for nothing. Don't say that. I wouldn't let a nephew of Lorden go to waste. And even if most villagers forgot fast what they owe your uncle, I have no intention to join them that here. I am the Castellan, and my word still carries weight here. So tell me, can you build your own fortune? 
I could craft simple tools. I could collect my necessities from the wilderness. I know how to count and to barter. That's good enough. I may not have goods or gold to offer, but you can have as much land here as you want. Not sold, but granted to you for life. Build a house, grow vegetables, keep some livestock, and follow your uncle's dream. Are you serious? My own land? As much as I want? As much as you put to good use, my boy. As long as you can pay your taxes. I understand. Do you have any advice for me to start with? You could cut down trees to build your house. Reeds by the river. It will work well for a roof. Do you have some food with you? Not much. If necessary, you will find several vendors in our village. If you don't have any money for food, you can always look for mushrooms in the forest or hunt animals. Maybe I could earn some coins somehow? Sure, you could talk to people here or in the other villages. Maybe someone will pay for your help. Thanks so much for the advice. It's time for me to find the right path. Let me see, I have something special for you. This is a hammer your uncle used to build the house in which he grew old. What better tool could you use to build your first home from? Thank you very much. See you next time. All right, so here we go. Finally, the beginning of the game actually starts here. We've already been through our menu. We've been through the construction wheel as well. And if you hold alt, you will access inspector mode, which is pretty key. It will show you important objects or things that are around town that are necessary. And there you can actually see an exclamation mark and somebody that we have to talk to for a task. So, why not? While we're here, might as well go see what he wants. Dogabort. What kind of names were these back then? I am just going to butcher these through the whole game, so bear with me. Can I help you with something? Help? I have a hole in the roof. I'll give you what you need. Okay. There you go. Looks like we just accepted a new quest. Ah, oh, hole in the roof. Here you go. Deliver two logs to him. Okay, there you go. We can earn 39 coin, a wooden hammer, and dynasty reputation. So, you do want to increase your dynasty reputation as you go throughout the game. It's very, very important. So, we do want to accept some side quests and get those done for people. But first things first, we have to build a home and decide where we're going to start our little little community or village so I have thought about this a little bit from my previous playthrough quite honestly because you have all these surrounding towns there almost looks like a hole right here or in this general area that would be the perfect spot to place my town because then we'd have pretty quick access to all the main surrounding towns here so I think I'm just gonna move a little bit north of Gustovia and move up into this area and start building there especially if we could find some flat lands for farming as well so we're gonna just uh sprint up this path here matter of fact we will also build a stone axe right now because we have everything necessary for that so we're gonna build an axe we have a hammer and if i go into my inventory we can put it in a clicks quick slots over here so we already have the stone axe applied so I'll put the hammer in the second spot there and now we are good to go make way up to the area that I'm going to try to place my home and this is just so beautiful look at this it's gorgeous. I absolutely adore the graphics of this game. So exciting. Reminds me so much of Banished and just a different completely viewpoint, which is so amazing being able to actually be on the ground and controlling my destiny instead of just telling people what to do. This is so much fun. Pick up some sticks. A few rocks here too. And once we build our first house, we will be able to have some inventory that we'll be able to leave there. So just grab a few things here. Look at that water. All right. So, yeah, we're getting up to the area right now of where I was considering. So let's go take a look over here quite a bit of land here that's quite flat right up against the water too 
And as you can see on the bottom left there, we have our stamina bar on the left, the green. We have the red bar, which is our health, the orange bar, which is our food requirements, and the blue bar is our water. So the water is quite easy to fix. All you have to do is go into this lake over here because it is fresh water and just hold E to take a drink. So you'll see there that it fills us right up as far as water goes and that's why it is kind of important if you're considering your town that you want to be somewhere near water because as you build and do all your requirements it's going to take up a lot of energy and a lot of water intake so having unlimited access to water is pretty key instead of being more inland somewhere and having to worry about going for hikes or carrying water to your land so this looks perfect right here honestly there's so much open land here for farming and we have a road here so i'm gonna build a house i'm thinking right here would be perfect right up, right up on the road and then we have all the water access and we can have farming land and other buildings along this side as well but i think for my home this is a perfect place so i'm gonna go ahead and chop down some trees Once you chop down the tree, you just have to go ahead and chop the tree down into pieces. And there you go. Now we have logs, individual logs that we can pick up. You need six logs in order to build a home, in order to lay down the actual foundation there. So we're going to have to cut down a few more of these trees. Timber going down all right let's chop this up there you go got a log there log there so it looks like we need one more and then we'll go ahead and set that house down if i can actually hit the tree here all right beautiful there she goes all right Oh, you can see now right next to my water intake there's a little red bar that's popped up that's because I am holding more weight than necessary and as that little weight menu fills up you'll get slower and slower and you'll even notice now I'm moving a little bit slower than I was before that's because I've got six logs on me so we're gonna go ahead and get those off of us right now anyways because we're gonna go ahead to buildings we're gonna go to houses and we are going to build a simple small house so let's see okay just making sure that's the actual door there because it was a little hard to tell all right so we're going to build this house right up against the road right there beautiful there you go that's going to be our house so if you go ahead and switch to your hammer right away you'll see this pop up and this is going to show you exactly what's required to finish this said house so we're going to need a log for each of these walls but we do have the stick so i'm going to go ahead and fill in the sticks as much as we can hopefully i have enough to finish this whole house i think we should still have 40 I'm going down there 36 got to catch my breath working a little too hard here all right beautiful Alright, beautiful. So now everything else just requires log and straw. So I'm going to go ahead. If you come down to the water here, we should be able to find some reeds eventually. And that will be our straw for our home. Hmm. 
Oh good, berries there. They're not going to be ripe quite yet, but when summer hits, those berries will be ripe. Not only are they good food intake, they also give you water. So if you do decide to keep them, they are really valuable in the sense of you're killing two birds at one stone. If you have berries on you and you don't have access to water anywhere close by, you could just eat a bunch of berries and you will get hydrated and fed as well. So really really key having berries on you as well they're apparently good to sell because you can make quite a bit of money off of them so all the way around berry hunting is a good method to grind money and get some food so here you can see all these bushes again these are all berries they're unripened right now so i'm not even going to bother i'm going to wait until those are ripe and for food we'll just worry about hunting when it comes down to that so but right now, I'm just trying to build this house up, and I'm looking for some reeds anywhere, man. I'm trying to finish up that, that roof to our house, but I haven't been able to find any by the water. And that is where you go, so... Hmm. I'm going to cross sides. Go for a little swim. Hmm. Apparently, it's not deep enough to actually swim, but... More berries. Like, look at all these berries everywhere. They're beautiful. definitely will be taking advantage of that when the time comes hmm. I know there are some reeds up here for some straw for that roof I know there's some up here so I guess we're gonna have to go all the way back here in order to find some but hey gotta do what you gotta do here you go here's the reed all right, so I'm gonna collect a bunch of this while I'm here, so that way I could put some in storage, worst case scenario, and I don't have to keep making this trip. All right, collect as much as we can. There you go, new level for survival, so that's awesome. Making some progress. Tons of reeds over here. I don't know why I couldn't find any over on the other side, but oh well. Also, let's see my food in my inventory. Yeah, they have given us some food. We have apple. We have dried meat and some oat rolls. So, okay, perfect. So we're good to go for today. We don't need to worry about getting any food. We just need to worry about getting this house up. So that's exactly what we're going to do. In this game, a season only lasts three days, so on our fourth day, it's going to switch to summer, and we are going to be able to go pick those berries. So for right now, we're not going to worry about any berries. And right now, speaking of berries, they're giving us an overall run-through of the food in this game. But like I said, we're not going to worry about that right now because we have been blessed with a little bit of food to start the game. So I don't know if I'm going to collect all this, but we'll see if it's not going to weigh me down on the way back I will just collect it so that way we can put it away because we are going to build more buildings and more homes as well so we are going to need more of this so Grinding away, grinding away. It's my straw. Another level. Beautiful. 
so in just grabbing some straw here we're leveling up and i think this is the end of the read so perfect That's as much as I'm going to grab because we are losing sunlight here. We cleaned a good chunk of that area out as well. So it's time to sprint back to our little village or what's soon to be a village. Might as well take advantage of the water being here. There you go. Get rehydrated. Because we're turning our guy into an athlete over here the, with the amount of running that I'm doing. Just such a beautiful game. Uh, you can see our house there in the distance. Sweet. Alright, it's time to go finish this up. Cut down some trees around it after we finish off the roof and then we are in business you can see all these mushrooms as well these are edible i will end up collecting those at some point here but first things first let's get in here yeah here you go there's the four seasons all right yeah so basically things are seasonal just like in real life so worth noting there you go you can see how much straw we have we collected 200 so we're not going to need straw anytime soon which is perfect all right now it's just a matter of getting some logs something worth noting and that's extremely funny about this game is in order to get rid of these stumps you can literally just punch them oh at least it used to be able to do that i guess they patched that with the new patch okay that makes sense you used to be able to just punch the stump and then it would disappear so I, i'm glad that they fixed that and now that you need a shovel so it actually makes that shovel worth grinding there all right i digress Let's get to chopping down some trees. Beautiful. You can also see as you're cut chopping up these trees that you get sticks from them. So killing two birds with one stone there, which is nice as well. I'm going to go ahead and put that lock there, put that lock there. And we're finishing these walls up as we do that. So there's a few things that you're going to be wanting to think about in these first few days. You're going to start wanting to think about how you're going to be making money within the game and how you're going to be feeding yourself. So there's quite a few things shelter is going to be taken care of after today. But there are lots of things that you have to plan out in this game and try and think about how you're going to make things happen. So we have already planned out the whole berry front. We could sell lots of berries because we could just take a whole day and go collect berries all day long and sell a good chunk of them. And as well as hold some for our own benefits because, as I said, they're extremely useful in this game. So those will be a hot commodity in three days. And we'll be able to make some things happen. But maybe tomorrow we go hunting so that we have some meat on us. And then the third day we try to grind some money maybe by making some axes. And selling those to those merchants back in the first town that we ventured off to. There's also some other towns that we're going to go check out. Because we want to be able to get some other side missions and build up our dynasty levels with those said little towns all right finish off all this oh we need more log all right time to keep chopping and our food is getting low so go ahead 
and eat some of this dried meat. One of those oat rolls. There you go. Now we're all full. All right. I'm gonna keep working. I'm gonna build a torch. There you go. Now we have a torch so we can see a little bit better out here at night. Because we are working into the late hours to get ourselves a shelter here. Gotta do what you gotta do though. This is survival, baby. Oh, a funny little trick I found out with this game is if you are overweight and you're having to move and it's just super annoying, if you hold shift and W, you think you might be able to run as fast as you can. But if you also press your arrow key, you'll notice that the game almost like registers that you're pressing up twice and it will give you almost double speed even while you're overweight. So it is worth noting that that's a, a fun little trick that I found out. All right. So now we just need three more logs to finish off this house and we are good to go and call this a night There you go, we're gaining all kinds of levels in this first day, so that's great news. Okay. Finish that wall up. Finish that roof. And there we go. Now we have somewhere to call home. You'll notice you have a bed for yourself and if you end up becoming a lucky guy you got the double bed for two you know there are wives and stuff in this game that you can get so hopefully we end up having use for this and we get somewhere with the ladies in the game we'll see we'll see but there you go there's our first finished house now we actually have somewhere to survive and you'll notice over there on the right side that we've hit chapter two now we're a survivalist and we have all new objectives to complete the next day but right now i actually think that this is a great spot to call our day what i will do is go into my inventory and go into skills and spend these points that we unlocked as you see that you unlock talent points for each individual section so it's not just like you earn a skill point and you have to choose where you put it you earn them by doing those said things in these so we actually have two points to spend in our survival tab so we're going to go ahead and spend those before calling it a day here yeah here you go survival knowledge is extremely important you get plus one skill point for survival action so that that will help us boost this up faster so we're definitely going to go ahead and do that press f to increase that and a matter of fact, I'll increase that twice. So that way this helps with points. Extracted knowledge is the exact same thing. We're going to do the exact same thing there and put our point there. And there you go. Now we've spent our talent points and we are making progress. And you'll notice on the map that our little house is now on there and our own little town has begun. And it looks like it was meant to be there. Honestly, it fits perfectly. And now we'll be able to have our own little town soon enough. But before completely calling this, we're gonna go into our chest and we're gonna get rid of the straw because we don't wanna have that on us anymore. That weight of 10.8 is quite a bit. Same with these sticks, it's using up a lot of our weight. We don't want that anymore. The rocks, uh, I will likely keep those rocks because we're going to have to build anyway. Same with the sticks. I will take maybe 20 of those over. 
24 is fine. All right. Log. Definitely don't want to have that log on me. If anything, I'll drop it outside somewhere. Don't need to store it necessarily right now. It's not that important. Um, everything else, I guess I do want to keep on me. Yeah, I will keep everything else on me. I will go get rid of this log, though. Just come over here and press X to drop. Bing, bang, boom. There you go. Drop the log. We'll get in here. And it's really cool. You can light a fire here. This is where you'll be able to roast your meat. And then when you do end up farming and having a plot of land for that, you'll be able to come in here and you'll be able to cook different recipes with the meat, for instance. So if you have cabbage, carrot, or beetroot or whatever that may be, and you're able to mix it with the meat, you'll end up being able to create meals that will be much more sustainable as far as how much food you fill with your belly so you won't need to use near as much meat or near as many vegetables if you mix the two together to create meals so we will get there eventually and but uh for for right now you can always use the actual campfire itself and you'll be able to come in here and roast your meat if you actually hunt some animals so that's what we'll be doing in the very beginning until we are all settled and uh for now i'm just gonna call it a night and we're gonna get some sleep And there you go. It's morning time. But without any further ado, guys, I think this is the perfect place to end this very first episode. If you guys have enjoyed this and you want this series to continue and you want to see more, please do hit that like button. It does let YouTube know that it's popular video and we'll end up recommending it to others like you who might enjoy this. So please do hit that like. It helps my channel so much. And make sure you do subscribe if you want to see this series continue and see the part two coming up very, very soon. Without any further ado, guys, this is Double Tap out. Oh.